This is an exciting day in Aiken County Public School District as we welcome Governor Henry McMaster, State Superintendent of Education Ellen Weaver, numerous educational and community leaders, members of our local media, and of course, students of J.D. Lever Elementary School. This morning, I'm so proud to celebrate what I am confident will be a transformative shift towards success in reading throughout South Carolina, a success story that was piloted right here at J.D. Lever Elementary. J.D. Lever's principal will share more about their story a little later and about J.D. Lever's teachers who were frustrated after doing their very best that they could to support their students and, and their students' reading success. But they were still not making the gains that they so desperately wanted and so desperately expected from the tremendous efforts that they, their students, and families put forth. I couldn't be more proud of this school's administration for their willingness to listen and hear their teachers' concerns for their determination to research and identify a solution and commitment to work shoulder to shoulder with every single teacher to learn and grow together so that they could together help our students grow. We thank the State Department for allowing J.D. Lever to serve as a pilot for letters. Thank you for investing in our teachers. We are certainly honored that you're here today as we celebrate a commitment to strengthen literacy throughout the state. Principal and teachers here will tell you that it's difficult work. It is. But it's the work that will impact the success of students in our teachers' classrooms today and in every classroom throughout South Carolina as they matriculate through their educational career. Teachers here are excited, empowered, and confident to support their students' success. It all starts with reading, and we couldn't be more proud that you're here today to see and to celebrate where it all started as the governor ensures that what we started here is shared with all early learning teachers in schools throughout South Carolina. We welcome each of you to Aiken County, and we welcome State Superintendent of Education Ellen Weaver to share a few words. Thank you, Superintendent. I really Thank appreciate you. it. <clears throat> Young men and young ladies, it is such a privilege to be here today as your state superintendent. I want to start by just telling you how proud we are of you and the hard work that you are doing every day. Today, we are here to celebrate the most important gift that we could give any of our students, and that is the gift of reading. I love to tell our students all over the state that if you read you have a superpower because in today's changing world and economy, we all have to be lifelong learners. And the way that you become a lifelong learner is to be a great reader. And so it is so special to be here with you today in this beautiful school, in this beautiful library to celebrate all the hard work that you and your teachers do every single day. You all are leading the way for our entire state here in South Carolina. We have an amazing window of opportunity in our state thanks to the leadership of our General Assembly and our educators all across the state as we celebrate this new law called Read to Succeed 2.0 is what I like to call it. So this really recenters and refocuses this law on what we call the science of reading, which is this amazing brain science that we have now that shows us how we learn how to read. There are actually four four different pieces in your brain that have to be connected in order for you to be a great reader. And do you know how those pieces get connected? They get connected by great teachers who know how to connect them with classroom instruction. And so I had the opportunity a few weeks ago to go and speak in front of the Senate Education Committee. And we are so fortunate today to have our Senate Education Chairman, Senator Hembry, with us. And what I was able to share with with those senators is that we have this amazing moment of opportunity because we can have the best plans in Columbia, but if we don't support our teachers in the implementation of those plans, it doesn't matter. The thing that matters most is what our teachers have, the tools that they have in their toolbox in the classroom. And so your leaders in the General Assembly have actually funded this important instruction for your teachers that's called letters training. And this is something that I'm actually doing myself because I believe so strongly in the power of the science of reading to ensure that every student in South 
South Carolina has the ability to be a great reader. And so that's what we're here to celebrate today, the superpower of reading. We are so proud of the incredible gains that you all have made here at J.D. Lever. And I just want to say thank you so much for your hard work and what you're doing to lead the way for our state. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Greg Hembry. I work at, uh, at the South Carolina Senate and have the, the privilege and the blessing of, of chairing the Senate Education Committee. Uh, and we, we were the, the committee that worked on this bill and, and got, it, got it through the Senate. Shannon Erickson is my counterpart in the House, and she is the chairman of the House Education Committee, and she was the one that carried the, the bill through the House. So it's, it's quite a process in Columbia. I want to say Happy Easter to you. This is a big week. Uh, is next week spring break? Yes. Anybody ready for spring break? Yes, we've got tomorrow off from the Senate, so am I ready for that? Yes. Um, I really, um, I, I'll just really quickly, was just, there's been a lot has already been said that, that I don't need to cover, uh, but I, I think I was driving here today, and really the, the word that kept popping into my head was sort of rededication. And uh, this is a sort of a second run at Read to Succeed. And uh, we passed it 10 years ago. Uh, it, uh, there, it, you know, we, we find out what works and what doesn't work. And we make adjustments. And this was the time to make those adjustments. So, uh, but every day, and I, I kind of have to do it every day, you get caught up in the politics in Columbia and you can get, you know, sort of in that, sort of that machinery and, and kind of get, you kind of get, get off track. And I've got a, uh, a sign over the door of my office when I go out. It's a sign. It's about that big. And it says, students first. And uh, that, is, that is our true north on the Senate Education Committee. And I just, I, I guess I come, I, I'm, every, every sermon is really a, a, a sermon to the preacher. You know, the pre he preaches to himself. Um, I guess my sermon is I want to keep myself rededicated to keeping students first and, and doing the most important job we can do, and that is provide the opportunity for a world-class education to every one of y'all. So thank you for the good work you're doing here, and uh, thanks for hosting us today. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you all. Um, I'm Miranda Williams, and I'm here on behalf of Excel in Ed in Action. Our organization, founded by Governor Jeb Bush, works with state lawmakers and partner organizations to pass legislation that empowers families with educational opportunity, prepares students for college and career, expands innovation, strengthens school performance, and prioritizes early literacy grounded in the science of reading. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. So I'm excited to celebrate the signing of S418, or Read to Succeed 2.0, I like that name, and the great strides at South Carolina is making in literacy. We are not born with the natural ability to read, but a person's ability to read is critical for educational and lifelong success. A strong evidence-based reading program that begins in kindergarten and continues into third grade and beyond gives students the best possible chance to maximize their education and excel in reading. South Carolina's Read to Succeed Act, now strengthened by S418, represents a commitment to excellence in early literacy grounded firmly in the science of reading. By implementing early identification of reading skills through screeners, the use of high quality instructional materials, and individualized reading plans for struggling readers, we are equipping our students with the tools they need to succeed academically and in life. We have seen states like Florida and Mississippi succeed in their efforts to boost early literacy through comprehensive policies based in science. In 2014, South Carolina became another leader addressing early literacy outcomes with the passage of the Read to Succeed Act. With S418, South Carolina's literacy efforts are further strengthened to close literacy gaps. As we gather here today to celebrate the signing of S418, we are not only signing a piece of legislation, we are laying a strong foundation for a brighter future for the children of South Carolina. As we move forward, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to promoting, to promoting literacy excellence for all students. Let us continue to champion evidence-based policies that empower educators, engage families, and uplift communities. And let us never lose sight of the transformative power of education to change lives and shape futures. In closing, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Governor Henry McMaster, Superintendent Ellen Weaver, 
Senator Greg, Greg Kimbrey, Representative Shannon Erickson, and the South Carolina families who have worked tirelessly to make S-418 a reality. Together, we are paving the way for a brighter, more literate future for the children of South Carolina. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kippy Kelly, and I'm the principal of J.D. Lever Elementary School. It is my honor to uh, address you all and say that we were one of the first schools to pilot letters with 100% faculty support because we knew that our students deserved better. We knew that our students needed to read in order to succeed in life. And thanks to the 100% faculty support, and the administration, Mr. Michael Truitt, who was here with us several years before, we were one of the first schools in South Carolina to complete both units of letters and succeed. We had a 37 on our report card two years ago, and through our efforts of going through letters as a professional development for our teachers, we are now at a 52 and we only expect that to keep rising. We have learned so much as a faculty and as a staff, and when I say as a faculty, I mean every single one of us, in, including the administrators, stood side by side with our teachers as we learned how the brain learns to read as Superintendent Weaver expressed. It is not rockets, I mean, it is not easy to teach a child to read. And we are so fortunate that every teacher in our building is letters trained and we we are only going to become excellent. And so I look at our students today and I think how lucky they are because they are in the best school in South Carolina because they have the best teachers in South Carolina. I do have a very small gift for Governor McMaster and Superintendent Weaver. So, um, Thank you. Thank you so much. These, these drawings are from our art teacher who is in the room, I believe, Mr. Ramey Fulmer. Um, he, he did these drawings for you guys as a thank you for coming to sign this very important bill into law. And we could not be more honored to host you today. So thank, thank you very, you very so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. My turn. Well, I think most of it's been said. I, I'm sure I am happy to be here. I remember my the, the teacher that I really loved and, and have remembered all my life was Ms. J H Ms. J H Moody Henry. She lived on North Trenum Road, and I had her for the fourth grade at Satchel Ford School. And we loved her, and she loved us, and she moved up to the fifth grade with us. And I went to a funeral a few years ago. She was over 100 years old, but I never will forget her because we don't forget our teachers because the teachers are the ones who unlock the world for us. So a quick story, there was a senator named Glenn Reese from Spartanburg. He was a businessman there. He had the Krispy Kreme donut stores up there. And he was a teacher as well. And he said in the Senate one time when he was introducing a group of students who had excelled in some capacity as we often as Senator Henry knows, recognize people that have done things. And I think they were third graders, and he was introducing them and explaining what they had done. And he made a comment, and in a little bit of jest, but there's a lot of truth in it, he said that when he was a teacher, if he'd known all those youngsters were going to grow up to be adults, he might have tried a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> so they all do grow up to be adults. Another point, y'all children, you see all these books. I have a, a friend, he was a quarterback on the professional football team, college and the Buffalo Bills. His name was Jack Kemp. He later was in Congress, ran for president one time. Every time I saw Jack Kemp, he had a book in his hand, every time. He's not alive anymore. But he told all of us that if we don't read three hours a day, at least three hours a day, 
we won't get ahead. We won't fully, fully maximize our, our potential. And I, I didn't realize it. I was much younger when he told me that. I, I thought he was exaggerating, but I've come to learn he's exactly right. So you have to know how to read. You have to be able to read, and you need to read a lot. Now, looking at these books, do you know there are computers in the world that everything that is in every one of these books could be right there in that computer times maybe a 1,000. This is just a little bit of what could be put in a computer. And you can get an Apple, you can get a Dell computer, all different kinds. And you know, you've probably seen the stores where you can go get those computers. They're like magic. But you know where you can go, where you see the best computer? You look in the mirror at your house and touch your head right there. There's no limit. Science has not determined the capacity of the human brain. There we know some computers, even the biggest ones, are limited, but that brain is not. That's the best computer there ever is, ever will be, and certainly is now. But how do you unlock that computer? How do you turn it on? You have to be able to read. If you can't read and read well, you'll, you'll be limited. So what we are doing today, what your teachers and your leaders and these people from the state government are doing today, is extraordinary. It is, if these plans, if this, these techniques, if these understandings are fully implemented, and they will be in this school, I'm sure, that will open every door in the whole whole world to you. So I'm, I'm here to, to encourage you, and I want to thank the administration here for being the ones to do this, but I want to encourage all you students to read, read, read. Learn from your teachers. Ask questions. There's an answer to every question, but you have to ask it first. And I want to thank these leaders for seeing to it that the children of South Carolina have the greatest opportunity to fulfill every dream and every expectation. Because the world knows South Carolina is going to the top. People coming from all over the world want to be in South Carolina. Why are they coming? Because of, because of the people. And you are the people. You're the young ones. We're the older ones. But this is... Some of us are much older, but this is going to be your world. And in order for you to fully appreciate it and make it a better place, you must read. So congratulations, everyone, and thank you for letting us be with you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'd be happy to talk about the training process. So um, we as a state have pursued um, what we call the coalition of the willing. And this is what is so special about being here at J.D. Lever is that they were the very first school to raise their hand to say, we need this training for our teachers so that our teachers can be everything that they need to be for our students. And so the letters training process is a very intensive two-year training. Um, we have heard teachers say that those first few units, and I can attest to this firsthand, are very challenging, very challenging. Um, a lot of cognitive science that you have to learn. But once you power through and actually get to the application of how this works in practice in a classroom with individual students, the ability to diagnose the challenges that students are having, um, teachers, it, it's just been transformational for their understanding. I would love to read actually a testimonial of a teacher that we just got today um, from Liberty Primary up in Pickens County. Um, this teacher said, I do not have enough great things to say about letters training. It is worth the time. As a teacher, I wish I could go back and reteach every single student I've come across to read the right way because after nearly 13 years, I finally feel like I can be a successful reading teacher. And as a mama of a struggling reader, I have never felt like more of a failure when in reality, I just didn't have the tools or the knowledge to help effectively. I am grateful 
grateful that I, along with his phenomenal teacher, have gained so much knowledge to, quote, know better and do better by children every day. And we are hearing those stories come in from all across the state of South Carolina. So that, to me, is, in, in addition to the incredible gift of literacy that this is giving to students, the sense of empowerment and efficacy that it is giving to our teachers is, is just out of this world. And so I'm so excited to be here today to celebrate um, J.D. Lever leading the way on this journey for South Carolina. Yes, so we actually have um, about half of our K-3 teachers that are already either in process or have completed letters training across the state. Um, our final cohort um, will start this coming fall, again, that two-year journey. Um, thanks to the um, partnership of the General Assembly and Governor McMaster, um, they have fully funded um, that training for all K-3 teachers. We now have districts that are saying, well, we'd love to offer it to fourth and fifth grade teachers. Some districts are even doing that out of their own pocket and in the governor's executive budget this year he also proposed and so far the house has um, has taken him up on that proposal expanding this into early childhood as well there is also training for k-4 teachers um, that's a little bit less intensive but still very important um, for that teacher knowledge base so it's ongoing in its implementation and rollout and we fully expect that within the next two years all teachers k-3 in south carolina will be fully instructed in letters Well, Senator, I don't know if you'd like to address this as well. Um, I feel like I've taken my fair share. <laughs> so um, the, the, we're currently in South Carolina, we have essentially four levels of reading in our, in our report card uh, and math for that matter. But, but um, c currently we have about 45% of our third graders are not reading on grade level when they, when they leave. Uh, currently, we're only retaining 1% of our third graders. So that's, you know, there will be, this legislation uh, addresses the bottom, the bottom level, which is about 20 to 25% of our, of our students in third grade are at that, at that lowest level. And those will be the students that will be retained if they're not reading on grade level. Uh, one of the good things, this, when there's some, they may be attending summer reading camps. They can get caught up. So that's one of the strategies. But another one of the strategies that is in, is in this bill, uh, we expand the reading camps to first and second grade. Because what, what we had happening is, you know, a child was already well behind by the time they got to third grade, and then it's, you know, kind of ringing the alarm, uh, and it's, it's too late. So, you know, we're hoping those, those early interventions. Uh, and there are a lot of those happening already. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, that every school is just failing. And it's, that's not the case at all. Quite contrary, there are a lot of schools that are, that are you know, doing a lot of great work, intervention, you know, creative work, really hard work to, to get their kids, you know, get their students on grade level. But, uh, but there are places that are not. And so um, this, is a, this is a pathway for them to hopefully find that better place. Thanks. Any more questions? Yes, a question for me. Just so I'm clear, what age group does this bill specifically target? So we have actually narrowed, um, the original bill was K to 12, and we just found that that focus was entirely too broad, so this really narrows the focus to those elementary grades K to 5. <laughs> you guys are the best audience ever. <laughs> These answers aren't that good, but I, I mean, I'll take the applause. Let's sign the bill. All right. All right. I'm going to get some children to stand behind you. That's okay. Yes, ma'am. Come on up.
Some more space back here too. Move that plant.